Spirit. Hey, how y'all doing? It's Rick Sincere with MTNV Sports. Man, I'm geeked, blessed, um, overjoyed to be joined by the newest Grambling State offensive lineman, Romello Watson. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing good, sir. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing well, bro. It's, it's really good to see you. It's really good to see um, just kind of how you've been moving. I like the way you move, my man. I ain't going to lie to you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, sure. been, you've been really... Um, like putting yourself into that whole Gramlin State family, right? Um, so that Gram fam thing, you've been really on that. Yo, talk to me about how much you've been enjoying um the the media run, right? So you've been on off script, you've been on Raw Truth Media, um, you even had some time uh, with the young man Chris the Method Man. I saw that interview as well, right? Um, so you just kind of been moving, man. How have you enjoyed the ability to um highlight your story and, and you know let everybody know about your journey? I, I've actually enjoyed it. It's been a, a, a fun, a fun thing to do. You know, it's some kind of different being, you know, my first interviews, you know, you got to kind of learn how to, you know, just relax, you know, and, and do the interview. So it's been, it's been a journey for, for real. I feel like, you know, just broadcasting my story and basically how I got to where I'm at now is something that I enjoy doing. And and you've been great in these interviews, and some and some you've just kind of been, um, you know, you're not just kind of answering the questions here and there, but some you really got in deep, and you really kind of walked people through some stuff. Um, and I've also noticed that when you go live or when you post post something, um, you you're on Twitter and you're hashtag Gramfam, hashtag Gramfam. Hey, look, follow me, come check out this journey that I'm on. Um, talk to me about or describe your interaction so far with the Gramfam um, fan base. Oh man, it's been amazing. You know, the grand fam, it's a family for sure. Just that that's one. And then and, and like they welcome you in with open arms, like everybody. Everybody feels like like you know, your aunts, your uncles, it kind of feel like you at home at a family reunion or something. It, it, it feels great. Awesome, man. Okay, so let's get into this thing a little bit. Now, let me ask you, you said aunts and uncles, right? You said it's been aunts and uncles. How much have you um how many, like, you know, I guess DMs and stuff you've gotten from actual students who are there right now? I got a lot. I have probably shoot a lot of follows, a lot of people just saying, you know, congratulations on you know, coming to Graham and, you know, we want to see you on the field and just waiting, waiting to see that ball snap, you know, that's, that's kind of what they're waiting on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, cool. So we're going to do something that's a little bit different. I haven't done this before, so, so take this journey with me if you don't mind, right? Um, I heard you on Off Script. At the end of it, he said, hey, just speak out to the Gramlin family. Speak out to, you know, HBCU world. Let them know, you know, what this year is going to be like for you. And you was like, yo, it's going to be a movie. And I was like, my man, I like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that, sure. right? It's going to be a movie. So we're going to take that movie path today, right? So we'll, we'll kind of walk down this thing. Um, I want to kind of pitch, you know, to the world here on uh, the Romello Watson movie, right? And so kind of talk to us about this. Play with me if you don't mind. Um, if the Ramilla Watson, you know, story was an actual movie, how would the opening scene play out, right? Describe that to me. What would that look like? Man, the opening scene, whew, that, that, that would be something. It got to be a banger. That would be probably, I'd say, the highlight of the movie because it's going to basically just show me, my mom, and, and my, my, my dad. And basically, like, just showing, I'll say, I kind of want the opening scene to be start off when I was little, you know, kind of where, you know, transitioning from home to home because my mom, she was locked up when I was little. So I kind of had to transition from my, my moving with my granny, then with my aunts and then with my brother. So I kind of want that to be the opening scene of the movie, just showing how, you know, just different things I had to go through in life as a young, as young kid, you know, then growing up and then boom, showing basically my family and, uh, it's gonna be a bang for sure. I say that. So the opening scene will start off there. I heard you um in one interview talk about um your time in high school, right? And then you going into um you you having some time, you know, in uh, incarceration, right? At least like one day or so, right? Where you go in front of the judge, and then yeah. the judge just kind of like lets you go, right? And says I don't want to see you here anymore. Um, where would that fall into the opening scene? Oh man, that that'll fall basically. I'll say that fall in early, just just like I. That's something I feel like that that I will build up to, kind of, mm. you know, just showing that because I actually had some more trials and tribulations before that, but just letting that build up 
to that point will probably be, I'll say, the climax of the movie at that point. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, um, in the movie, right? How would you help viewers to see your time in high school and then that transition to Kilgore? How I help them see it? Um, I'll say, man, I'll probably uh, show, you know, my, my Seguin High School. I'll probably show that, that ending time of Seguin, like their senior year, because that was pretty more one of my easier years, you know. And probably I'll show my sophomore year where my coach talked me into playing football again so that'll probably that'll be one of the main scenes right there then i'll transition it into my first year of kill college where you know i went through some trials and tribulations too there that you know people would have quit at that point you know man i want to know okay so i know at one point you were a major hooper right you go from hooping mm -hmm. um to playing a d line and then transition into the offensive line right from from O line to D line, what was that like? What was the biggest thing you felt like you had to change mindset wise? Man, I had to learn how to be patient. You know, I had to sit back and just learn how to be patient and let everything come to me instead of me. You know, you know, a D line and you're aggressive you're on your heels, and that's something that you can't do as O line. You can't just always be on your toes, ready to to, to hit. You got to be ready to sit down and punch at the same time. But you also got to be ready to read read the defense and like know where to block and know how to block. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. So okay, now I've watched film. I've seen you work, my man. This aggression that you bring on the field, right? Yes, With sir. that, like most offensive linemen don't have that. It seems like you have to have, and and we'll talk about this later. But it seems like by the end of the play, your man has to be on the ground. Or you're not playing football. That's basically what it oh, yeah. is. So oh, does that aggression come from your time on the D-line, or does that come just, like, you know, from you you just being an overall, like, you know, athlete? That's that that's that D-line to O-line transition aggression right there. That's, mm -hmm. that's I feel like, most of the old linemen that are pancake monsters like that, that's, they play D-line sometime in, in, their, in their career. Had to. So who who helped you? to make that transition because it's a hard one. Your footwork has to be right, right? Like everything has to be different than the way you are, you know, on D-line. Who helped you the most make that transition? Man, I I've had a lot of people, I'll say, it it's it's a lot of names that I can throw in there that help me because it's, man, I start off with my high school coach, uh, Coach Coach Bickham. He's the O-line coach at us again right now. He came in a little bit later in my career, like my junior year. So he he kind of they him and Coach Moses, Coach Moses was an ex uh, NCAA player. He played at uh, Kansas State. He was a, a O line in Kansas State. You know, made it to the NFL training camps, rookie camps. You know, play did that, and then now he's a businessman. So he was helping me just learn different techniques. You know that that I'll say that you some people at my age would have learned. I'll say that like I was knowing stuff early before some people did, and it kind of got me to where I didn't. I was kind of like shaky with it my junior year, mm -hmm. but senior year I, I was ready to go. I kind of felt it. That's why my senior year I was going crazy, you know. So senior year. Now here's the thing, and and I and I think this is a pure shame, bro. Um, I don't see people record pancakes like as a stat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we know offensive linemen know how many pancakes you had in a particular year, right? Um, but oh, yeah. they don't kind of always put it down. Oh, he's had 14 pancakes this year. Or maybe your line coach did. Your senior year, right? Because we'll get into what happened at Kilgore, but your senior year of high school, how many pancakes we're looking at looking at? About 50, 60. It was, <laughs> it was up there, 70. So it was somewhere in that number. It was it was high. I had I had so much film I had to break down. It was crazy. So help me understand why the the um Offers didn't come in like that, right?